Alors, bonsoir tout le monde. Euh, excusez notre. Good evening, everyone. Uh, sorry for the lateness. Uh, usually, the, the meeting is started earlier than usual, so we've added things at the uh, in camera session. So, to start with the uh, opening word, uh, dear colleagues, may we have the serenity to accept the things that we cannot change, the courage to change the things that we can change, and the wisdom to know the difference. So, good evening. Everyone, we are on our summer schedule. Maybe we should have started our summer schedule earlier because uh, finally we've got a summer. So without further ado, we have a quorum. All members of council are here. And we will start with the, no, conflicts of interest, uh, sorry. Are there any uh, declarations of conflicts of interest? No? Okay. So now we go to the adoption of the agenda. Moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier. On the question. All those in favor of the resolutions, signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay. So the agenda is accepted as presented. That brings us to the item seven presentations, inquiries, and petitions. I don't think we've had any petitions that were requested, but we do have. Sorry, Monsieur Godet. It's concerning. Uh, the, we're not there yet, but thank you anyway. So there's no petitions, uh, no inquiries. So we go to item 7.1. I see that our friends from the RCMP are not here. Normally, they would be here around uh, 7 p.m. Maybe we forgot to mention to them that, or maybe the message wasn't sent to everyone. So, But if there are things to raise, we will raise them and we'll take note of them and uh, we'll make sure that uh, the information is uh, sent to, to the uh, Kodiak Regional CMP. Mr. Godet, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I would like to raise a question a problem that uh, uh, has been going on for quite a while. It's behind the Anna Malenfant School. There are still problems. Uh, youth get together there at night up till two in the morning. They make noise. And the people who live right by are constantly disturbed by these noises. There are basketball nets and some youth uh, playing or playing their basketball till early in the morning. Two points. First of all, the police have already been there, and they just asked them to leave. Well, the following evening, they're there. So it continues, and it's going on. And uh, so we suspect that there's uh, drugs there uh, because... There are at least uh, 10 or 15 youth there. Also, the problem is that there seems to be uh, car access to behind the school, and there have been complaints with the school district. And even our city staff seems to be that the school district are not really interested in what's uh, going on there because it's uh, outside of the regular hours. So it's another problem. She told us that it didn't seem to be a problem for them. So I want to raise this point. It's unfortunate that the police is not here tonight, but it's really a problem that we like to address. Either put barricades there or take away the basketball nets during the summer. Because it seems that the youth who are there are so small that uh, they don't play with those nets anyway. That's the problem that we have, and I wanted to uh, express it uh, tonight. Thank you, Monsieur Menoncion. Yeah, specifically on that question, uh, Councillor Le Boutillier had sent me an email, and I transferred it to, to the uh, people uh, responsible for the bylaws. So we're going to be working with them. We're going to be working with the RCMP to see how we can address this situation. Uh, the question of uh, basketball nets, we have to remember that it's a community park, so there is a use outside of school hours. 
but we'll have to sit down and uh, check out the options and address the uh, challenges that we have here. It's uh, something that uh, is uh, recurring over the last couple of years, so we have to sit with the uh, people uh, and uh, try to find solutions, and we'll inform you. So maybe if you could meet also with the school district. Yeah, it's a partner, so we'll be meeting. Thank you, Mr. Bridau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, speaking of the RCMP, I already brought forth uh, the question of speed on our streets. Over oh, two weeks, there's a construction on Gaspé Street, and uh, over the last uh, three days, I received complaints uh, from uh, Thibodeau Street residents who say that uh, it's totally unacceptable, the speed on Thibodeau Street. So I told those people that I would bring it to the RCMP again, because on Gaspé Street it's impossible, because there's no so much equipment and there's uh, stops and all over the place. But uh, the youth, uh, well, the youth, so I don't know. I say, okay, the summers has started. So we like to speed in the streets, but uh, Thibodeau is uh, even narrower than Gaspé Street. Once again, we're taking note of this and we'll uh, inform the RCMP. I think it's uh, when we're old that we're always blaming youth. Monsieur Alain, thank you, Mr. Mayor. As uh, Councillor Godet uh, said, I also talked at that individual on the safety at uh, Annam and Enfant School. So uh, I second the motion that we uh, contact the school district. Uh, they have a role to play for sure, to make sure, as the uh, CEO says, okay, it's a community park, but uh, there's a uh, closing, closing times uh, for the park, and there's a sign there. Uh, maybe take the uh, basketball nets uh, during the summer. So, but there's still a duty to of uh, good corporate citizenship on the part of the school district. So just to make sure that uh, I wanted to validate what the citizens have said. And uh, you received the uh, email from Madame Le Coutelier. The residents are concerned. Thank you. So, an audible comment. Thank, thank you for your interruption, but uh, or intervention. Interve I, I meant to say intervention. Excuse me. <laughs> My English failed me for a second, but uh, that's why our uh, our uh, city manager said that they would work with bring staff in and find a solution to it. Obviously, that may be one solution, but there may be others. Like, you know, we have. Uh, uh, interveners in the in our community that can also go talk to these young people you know we have a whole leisure and community services department uh, that surely can spend some time i uh, spent a lot of time on the streets in my younger days coming from a you know big city blue color neighborhood so i know what happens after hours don't take away their basketball net please uh, you know, we may be uh, stifling uh, the, the growth of a, a future LeBron James. <laughs> Who knows, right? So, uh, and I see a lot of kids walking on down Charlesville Road with a basketball and uh, going back there. Uh, so I know it's a very busy, but when I see them, it's usually daytime, though, I must say. Uh, but, uh, yeah, there's cer certainly something that can be done. I mean, it's a, uh, it's a small problem for a small community and let's not let's not over overdo it either and i understand the concern of the local citizens in in, in that area you know they uh, i get it i get that but where the basketball nets are is adjacent to uh, to a development complex and uh, i understand their concern but you know i'm just suggesting that there's a lot of ways to approach it other than just shutting everything down that's my my view, but uh, but it needs to be addressed. 
<laughs> okay, quelqu'un d'autre? Anybody else on the complaints to the RCMP? I don't see any other lights. So we go to item 7.2. on the public hearing for the amendment to conditions zoning bylaw Z841. Monsieur Frenette, good evening. Good evening, Mr. Mayor. So tonight, it's a public hearing on the zoning bylaw Z841. That is the one that was uh, basically was concerning the different uh, conditions on Sobeys on Diet Boulevard. So it's going to be short tonight as a presentation because there are not too many amendments, just to one important one. It's the uh, timeline. So we'll talk about the modification. And then if there are any questions or comments, then... Uh, so the owner is a Sobeys Capital Inc. The agent is a Crombie. The portion of the PAD... Uh, Identification number is uh, 706-11108, and the uh, land is on the west, on the east side of Boulevard Dieppe, and uh, north of Rue Ivre. So, as usual, I show you the uh, timelines of the procedure for the modification of the bylaw tonight as the public hearing, because if it's because it's only a modification to the bylaw, there's no amendment to the municipal plan. We uh, go immediately to the public audience, he, public hearing. Then on the 18th of July, there will be a recommendation that will be brought to the uh, Planning Advisory uh, Committee. And then on the 13th of August, the Council will be able to decide on the uh, request by the uh, person. The uh, site plan, the modification that's uh, proposed is that Condition number four and five identified a timeline of two and three years for two buildings on the site. On the other hand, the uh, deadline means that the timeline is over. So in order to continue the project, they had to uh, amend the initial bylaw. This is why they're asking for an extension of three years. That will bring us to the 26th of March, 2021. Another slight modification it has no impact except that on the except that on the initial site uh, there was there had been an amendment the building e but building d was modified to building e that's a little bit of a modification but it has no impact on the project tonight it's really for the extension of three years that was asked we mentioned the two conditions four and five we just wanted to basically uh, show you what was in the bylaw if anybody in the hearing wanted to have more some information one of the details want to know what it was exactly the, the specific wording of the uh, conditions of four and five we have the site plan really it was the buildings d and e so there was a switch in the lettering so, to come back to the procedure, like I explained, the next uh, step is uh, the 18th of July, we'll, we'll get the recommendations from the uh, advice uh, or council, uh, advice number 110 of the PAC, uh, Planning Advisory Council, and then it's basically for an extension to the 21st of March uh, 2021. We sent letters to the neighbors, we received uh, three calls. To, from people wanting to know what the modifications were. We had indicated it clearly what the modifications were, but they basically wanted to make sure that uh, they had understood the letter that was sent. And the three people to whom we talked had no objections with the proposed modification. So that's it. Questions from members of council or from members of the public? Question from the public? No. All right, that's it. Thank you. Thank you. So we'll come back to it on the 18th, the 13th of August. I was close.
So now questions. None. So we go to the adoption of minutes of the regular council meeting held on the 25th of June. Moved by Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Brideau. On the question. No questions. So all those in favor of the adoption of the uh, minutes of the 25th of June meeting signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay, carried as presented. Nine, sorry, 10 motions, memorandums and nominations, 10.1. Monsieur Melançon. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, well, there's a first uh, item. It's recommended to accept a term remuneration for the citizens, a recommendation to review the remuneration of the mayor and councillors. There are two key elements that uh, are the responsibility of this uh, working group. As you know, Radio Canada, the taxation, Revenue Canada, uh, in uh, 1st of January 2019, there are changes to the taxation, so things have to be adjusted. And also the Association of Francophone Municipalities in New Brunswick developed a assessment guide concerning the remuneration of members of council in New Brunswick with uh, member <coughs> municipalities of the uh, association. You can find that on the site web of the association and on the uh, municipalities. This guide will be a, a reference point, and the, the idea also will be to see uh, the possibility of other options during the term. So we recommend uh, you to uh, accept this uh, resolution. The people were contacted. They were accepted in principle, and they will be participating. Now, just uh, remains to set up the committee and the people who have been called on, uh, suggested, in Alphabet Agora, Camille Béliveau, Robert Frenette, Isabelle McKay-Alain, Madame Micheline Paulin, and Mr. Jean-Guy Vienneau. And ex officio members, myself and the treasurer, Mr. Stefan Terriot. We can also alternate if there's a member ex officio who is not available for the meeting. So this is to receive the direction to go forward with this working group for the reading of the resolution. Mr. Thibodeau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. That council accept the mandate for the creation of a working group of citizens attached to the memorandum dated June 12th, 2018, for the revision of the Municipal Council members' remuneration and further accept said mandate and October 26th, 2018. So moved. Moved by Councillor Thibodeau. Seconded by Councillor Leblanc. On the question, Mr. Godet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. When you say, Monsieur Melançon, the other options, can you give us an idea as to what that is? Is it uh, just options concerning remuneration, or are there any other elements just on remuneration? Okay, thank you. Any other questions? Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Francophone Municipality Association have already made recommendations for the remuneration, councillors and mayors. So the association has presented uh, during their AGA in last fall a guide. So it's not a policy, it's not an act or a law, it's a guide uh, that the municipalities can choose to follow. So council seems to be comfortable with, was, which, what, with what was uh, put forth. So it's a tool, maybe is there another tool that's more efficient or is this a, The guide was made available to all members of municipal council. It's been a while already. Yes, I just wanted to make sure that it was clearly mentioned. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Thibodeau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Will they also be studying the uh, same things uh, with uh, 
other municipalities of the same size concerning responsibilities. Yes, I will be suggesting they do that, but it will be the committee's responsibility to uh, have uh, their own mandate and uh, take charge, and then they'll give you a report. But certainly we will certainly uh, suggest that they make comparison with other municipalities of the same size, uh, the services offered, and all the economic and community aspects involved. Thank you. Any other questions? If not, we go to the vote. All those in favor of the resolution, signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Carried as presented. Next item 10.1.2. Mr. Melanson. So it's been announced a couple of weeks ago. There's a partnership with Uni Corporation Financière and SED of Dieppe. With this uh, project, uh, Uni Intergenerationnel. Now it's uh, officializing it. Uh, the agreement is there to for signature. Uni has uh, signed already. It's clear in the agreement that we need a resolution to for us to be able to sign it. So this gives a list of the responsibilities of the city of Dieppe in this agreement and the uh, duties of Uni. It's an agreement, it's a payment of a total $1 million over 15 years with the possibility of having uh, uh, the name over 20 years on the building in question. So we have uh, elements that we can do with this agreement, go see other institution, financial institutions for other elements of the finance funding campaign. Uh, you have the list, uh, you have read it, so it's uh, to be able to put our signature on this agreement. Thank you for the reading of the resolution. Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Council authorized the municipal signing officers to sign a sponsorship agreement between the City of Dieppe and Uni Corporation Financière pertaining to the Intergenerational Community Complex Fundraising Campaign. So moved, Mr. Mayor. Moved by Councillor Arsenault, seconded by Councillor Alain. On the question. No question. All those in favor of the resolution, signify by saying aye. Connery minded, nay. The resolution is uh, carried as presented. Monsieur Menonso, next item. I lost my sheet. No, sorry, 10.2.1, Partnership Atlantic Sports Arts Education Academy. So, a representative of uh, uh, Sport Art Education Academy came to make a presentation in June, I think it was the 18th with an element of uh, an academic element with our complex that is being uh, conceived uh, with uh, education and arts. The staff looked at what was being presented and here are the elements that were included and that requires a decision tonight to have a uh, ICE rental rate for youth accredited on evenings and weekends when necessary. So we say it's not that often, and it's mainly before uh, holidays, before uh, tournament activities. Uh, so there won't be any uh, problems with availability of ice. Also, storage space at Arthur G. Leblanc at a $5 suite, a square foot for a total of 120 square feet. Also, parking of their minibus, minibus at their, uh, the aquatic center. Uh, for the July 10th, 2018th to August 31st, and also granting five board advertising spaces at Arthur G. Leblanc Center for Sales. So that's the agreement, the rental agreement also, and these are the conditions uh, so that this uh, officializes the rental or the lease. For the reading of the resolution, Mr. Godet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The Council support the Atlantic Sports Arts Education Academy for its first year of operation from September 1st, 2018 to August 31st, 2019, as follows. By charging the youth accredited ice rental rate on evenings and weekends when necessary, by granting a storage space rental at the Arthur G. Leblanc Center at the cost of $5 a square foot for a total of 120 square feet, 
by allowing the parking of a minibus at the Dieppe Aquatic and Sports Center for the July 10th, 2018 to August 31st, 2019 period, and by granting five board advertising spaces at the Arthur Gilles Center for Sale. So moved. Moved by Councillor Godet, seconded by Councillor Thibodeau on the question. Monsieur Alain, just to clarify to the uh, Education, Sports Arts Education Academy, it's Mathieu Martin? Is it with Mathieu Martin? Monsieur Bujot. Good evening. Yes, the students, depending on the ages, because some of them are younger, but it's the Francophone school system. So it's the students who are going to be using the, uh, the schools of the Francophone system of the Southeast. What rooms are going to be using at Tartier Gilles Leblanc? Uh, all the spaces are already uh, taken. It's under the um, seats. It's just to stock their equipment. Uh, it doesn't uh, affect uh, the operation. Any other questions? All those in favor of the resolution? I would have a question. Sorry. Clarification on the uh, mandate, because when there was a presentation and we said there's not going to be a conflict, I want to validate with the other groups because of our lack of ice uh, areas. Uh, I mean, we're looking at evenings and uh, weekends. Could you clarify this? Because uh, we were told it was going to be around 2 in the afternoon uh, during the day and nobody would be affected. Yeah, you're right. There's no use almost uh, evenings and uh, weekends. It could be some special games, but these are specifically hours that, where the ice is not being used right now. It's, it's, it's minimum. We include it because we didn't get that request officially. But in discussion with them, maybe they will have some activities uh, during the uh, evenings and weekends, but it'll be very minimal. My other question is, it's on the uh, advertising board spaces. It's, uh, is this extra? Is everything going to be used? Are we going to take away from one to give to the other one? It's a good question. I think you're aware of the process. We have the youth uh, groups. There's a certain amount that can be sold, but what we noticed, uh, since the commandos have left, uh, the boards are not all sold, uh, so we're going to be setting aside five for those, and we're not taking anything away from anybody else. All right, thank you very much, Mr. Mayor. So, no other question? If not, uh, I don't see any. So, all those in favor of resolution, signify by saying aye. Contrary-minded, nay carried as presented. Item 10.3.3. 10.3. So before you, you have the question of asphalting of the temporary parking lot between City Hall and 200 Champlain Street. It's next to Municipal Hall. Uh, so uh, it has, we need to have improvements, um, especially because of the wetness, but we're going to improve the drainage. We're going to maintain accessibility also, which is very important. Also, people's safety during winter. So we have a contract with uh, Modern Construction. There were five bidders. Modern Construction is one that's recommended for $197,857.50 plus GST. So it's to work on the parking lot. There's going to be some uh, uh, sidewalks or board. Um, there's going to be some grass, etc. So, so I'm repeating, this is a land that is still for sale. So there's a slight risk that if there's a customer who presents himself, we'll tell them, okay, we will not refuse a land transaction. But we think that the risk is fairly well measured. So this is for the Improvement of the parking lot for the resolution for the reading of the resolution. Mr. Brideau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor 
that uh, council award the contract for the project entitled City Hall Parking Lot to the lowest bidder, being Modern Construction 1983 Limited, at the cost of $197,857.50 plus HST, and authorizes expenditure be defrayed from account number 3-3-35-58-7642, general capital budget, parking lot, 200 Champlain Street. So moved. Moved by Councillor Brideau, seconded by Councillor Cormier on the question. On the question, Monsieur Alain. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. So, Mr. CEO, I don't have a problem on improving the uh, land. I think it's a little high for temporary parking. There have been a lot of discussions. Uh, I think that uh, there's a question of the sale of the land. It's going to be sold eventually. So my question right now is we're going to be voting on bringing up the parking up to standards, the least temporary. If, we, if I say, what did the Expansion Dieppe say when we put in a request? In the document that there is a resolution of Expansion Dep who accept this because it's their land, but one of the part of the work that's important is that we have to have a, a, a place that is going to be a reduction of one meter. Uh, maybe I'm, I think that, so. There's a question of uh, uh, compacting and of uh, grading, so we have to respect the uh, eight percent. Uh, hill for uh, people with uh, limited mobility. So what we're saying is that the option, we have an option of saying the land is no longer for sale. I think for, for the city of Dieppe, we're trying to densify our downtown. We're trying to look for a building that is going to be a couple of stories high. So this project in the future, we anticipate that there'll be underground parking, so the uh, surface parking will be underground, so we're not losing an amount of uh, parking spots, maybe a couple, but the surface parking will be underground, and also uh, in the parking, also, it says that we need 500 parking spaces, so that's part of the uh, downtown uh, global plan. Uh, of this uh, parking that will occur when it, it, it becomes necessary. I can see that, yes, uh, there are some good points, especially that uh, right now we have visitors who come to see us and it's not really easy. Uh, I mean, if there's one parking that has to be improved, obviously it's that one. Uh, so we're calling it temporary. Uh, I just want to make sure that we densify, that we have uh, all the opportunities around that. There's a beautiful block uh, next, next on the uh, Champlain and uh, there's a whole space to Champlain and Marché. Yeah, we have to put uh, borders for the uh, storm waters that in the winter freeze and uh, so it's not just one step or two because uh, the one goes with the other five elements that we have to work on. So, All right, thank you very much. Thank you, Monsieur Alain. Monsieur Godet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. With the years, uh, I mean, if the land is not sold, or things are going to be changing, etc. In relationship to what uh, Daniel has just told us, I suggest that uh, the project be entitled Temporary Parking, City Hall Parking, because maybe that will become a, a debate. As far as the title is concerned, it's uh, Temporary Parking. And the agenda, it's, uh, we want to make sure that it's a temporary parking. All right, thank you. Thank you. Maybe for an investor who has an imagination, it could probably encourage him to, uh, say, uh, keep the uh, parking there, have another one underground, and uh, put another four or five floors. So sometimes we have to uh, use our imagination when you think of the future. Uh, okay, 10.4. Sorry, we haven't voted yet. Okay, no other questions. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. 
just for information, the parking will be closed at least for two weeks for construction, for work. So we're going to be contacting the contractor tomorrow. Uh, the objective is for it to be reopened on the 13th of August for the next uh, public meeting at the latest. So that doesn't change anybody's idea on the vote. If not, say so right now. All those in favor, you've already said yes. Nobody said nay. So the resolution is carried as presented. <laughs> well, that was a nice Acadian comment. So now we can go to 10.4 per one. Uh, this is a yearly basis. We have a privileged presence of Monsieur Drolet tonight. Uh, it's the renewal of the group insurance plan with Assumption V. Monsieur Drolet tries to get the best rates with all the uh, suppliers. It's recommended to go with Service Financier Gauguin Champlain financial services in so starting the 1st of uh, August 2018 to July 31st 2018 for the cost of one million three hundred sixty four thousand seven hundred dollars we're talking about the increase the fluctuation an increase of 0.6 percent which is reasonable but there are still elements that have to be uh, studied uh, midterm and the other one is the renewal of accidental life insurance the recommendation is to go to with rbc insurance at the monthly rate of 0 0.028 per one thousand dollars that's the recommendation if you have any more clarifications you need monsieur Drolet is here to give that thank you for the reading of the resolution monsieur alain Mr. Mayor, thank you. The council authorized renewal of the group insurance plan and the pooled coverage with Assumption, v, Assumption Life as per the terms outlined in the letter and table submitted by Services Financier Gauguin Champlain Financial Services, Inc. in June 2018 for the period starting August 1st, 2018 to July 31st, 2019 at the estimated cost of $1,364,700. That council further authorized the renewal of the accidental life insurance plan with RBC Insurance at a monthly rate of 0 0.028 per $1,000. Moved by Councillor Alain, seconded by Councillor Leblanc on the question. No questions. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay, carried as presented. And we go to the next item. Public Works 10.5.1. Monsieur Menoncion, you have before you, we do this annually with the suppliers for construction material, for the operational needs of uh, public works and engineering. No, sorry, public works and installation. So you have here an RFP. You have the... Uh, table in appendix so each element of a crushed stone sand and uh, rip wrap uh, recommendations for suppliers who submitted proposals in the resolution it'll be clear who gets what element i don't want to repeat it mcdonald pavement is one dexter is another one and the graystone quarries incorporated is the third supplier for a third element so we do this, it's for three-year contracts, so it's a very good price, so we recommend to sign for three years. Thank you for the reading of the resolution. Madame Le Boutillier. The Council award the tender entitled supply and delivery of crushed stone and sand for the July 10th, 2018 to May 31st, 2021 period to the following lowest bidders pursuant to their respective proposals. That the 0 to 31.5 millimeters crushed stone, the 0 to 19 millimeters crushed stone, and the sand for the ice control delivered to the Dieppe Operations Center be purchased from McDonald Paving Construction Limited. That the 5 to 20 millimeter crushed stone and the R. 25 riprap delivered to the Dieppe Cooperation Center be purchased from Dexter Construction Limited and that the R5 riprap delivered to the Dieppe Operation Center be purchased from Greystone Quarries Incorporated. 
So moved. Moved by Madame Le Boutillier, seconded by Madame Arsenault on the question. No questions. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye. Contrary minded, nay. Resolution is carried as presented. Municipal bylaws, 11.1. Monsieur Menonçon. So here you have before you the elements of uh, modification of bylaw A8 2018 with the uh, elements of the pension plan for the employees of the city for the first and second reading by title. If you have any questions, we can come back on the 13th of August for details with Monsieur Sima. For the reading of the resolution of the bylaw, sorry, Monsieur Leblanc. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bylaw number A-8, 2018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe respecting the pension plan for the employees of the city of Dieppe. So moved, first reading by title. Moved by Councillor Blanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier. On the question, all those in favor of the resolution, by title only, first reading, signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay. <clears throat> Bylaw A8 2018 on the pension plan is uh, carried. Uh, first reading by title. Second reading by title only, Monsieur Leblanc. Bylaw number A8 2018, a bylaw of the municipality of Dieppe respecting the pension plan for the employees of the city of Dieppe. So moved by title only. Second reading moved by Councillor Leblanc, seconded by Councillor Cormier. On the question. All those in favor of the resolution signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay. Bylaw A8 2018 is carried second reading by title only. Now, item 11.3, no, sorry, point two. Bylaw C1 relating to the traffic and parking. Monsieur Benonso. So here, to total review of the traffic and parking bylaw. We try to clarify the definitions, uh, provincial, municipal, regional, uh, you see, the uh, heavy trucks, the weight, uh, 5,500 kilograms. There are uh, signage that are going to be installed to enforce this uh, bylaw, this uh, whole question of uh, forbidden prohibited parking, the shipment offloading and delivery zones, identif zone identified as prohibited except for shipping and offloading, then impoundment, emergencies, the whole question of recreational vehicle parking permits, we talk about maximum periods, uh, 24 continuous hours, uh, not more than five uh, days. Uh, conditions, we're talking about uh, chargers, fees. So these are the elements that are being recommended in these changes, in the review of this version. Then there'll be also the, uh, the penalties and infractions that can go from $30 to $125. So it's for the first and second reading by title only, and then at our next meeting, there will be the opportunity to question or to add things for the third reading. Thank you, Monsieur Menonçon. So for the first reading by title only, Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. By law, C-1, a bylaw relating to traffic and parking in the city of Dieppe. So moved, first reading by title only. So moved by Madame Arsenault, um, seconded by Councillor Brideau. And on the question, Monsieur Godet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. A comment maybe for the next meeting to know the reading of this, I didn't see anything concerning a problem that we had last year with tractors that were used for the winter for snow removal. We had a problem where the tractors stay there 
all summer next to the houses, and it seems that the answer was, well, that's not exactly what we wanted, but it was a question of uh, trailers for a reason or another. So I'd like to address that section at the next meeting to see if we can solve that problem. Thank you, duly noted. If there are no other questions, all those in favor of the uh, the resolution C1, uh, bylaw C1, relating to travel by title only, signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay, resolution is carried. First reading. Now for the second reading, once again by title only. Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Uh, bylaw number C1, a bylaw relating to traffic and parking in the city of Dieppe. So moved. A second reading by title only. Thank you. Moved by Madame Arsenault. Second reading. All those in favor of resolution. Seconded by Monsieur Brideau. All those in favor of resolution signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay. Bylaw. C1 is carried in by in second reading by title only. Item number 11.3, bylaw C26, authorizing the city of Dieppe to permanently close Marsh Road here. It's uh, Marsh Road, exists uh, for the longest time, but now there's a whole question of access for the street that is going to be facing Alain Gillette in the future, so that uh, land is no longer necessary as a public roadway. So as a procedure, we must read it to officially close the road. This is to be considered tonight, and this could be integrated in a future development. Thank you for the reading for bylaw C-26, Mr. Comier. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Bylaw number C-26, a bylaw authorizing the city of Dieppe to permanently close Marsh Road. So moved, first reading by title only. Moved by Councillor Comier, seconded by Councillor Arsenault. On the question. No question. All those in favor of the resolution. Monsieur Brideau. Thank you. Yes, Mr. Mayor. My question is to the uh, city manager. We close the street, but uh, at one point, uh, the walking trail was uh, supposed to continue. Is that going to affect anything? Mr. Mayor, so the uh, aspect of the uh, walk tra walking trail is going to be part of a project, so we still have uh, the idea of having uh, access uh, to the walking trail. Thank you. No other question? All those in favor of the resolution C of the bylaw C-26, first reading by title only, saying by saying aye, contrary minded nay. So bylaw C-26 is carried in First reading by title only. We go to the second reading now by title only. Monsieur Cormier, bylaw number C 26, bylaw authorizing the city of Dieppe to permanently close Marsh Road. So moved, second reading by title only. Thank you. Moved by Councillor Cormier, seconded by Councillor Arsenault. On the question. No questions. So all those in favor of the uh, of accepting bylaw C-26 at its second reading by title only signify by saying aye, contrary minded nay. So bylaw C-26 is carried second reading by title only. And we go now to notices of motion. No notices of motion. Monsieur Venoso, 13. Inquiries and announcements by members of council. 
If it becomes necessary, I'll give you an additional minute because our colleague from the RCMP, because I have the impression that items will be raised again following the discussions that we had while you were not here yet. So I think we were talking, uh, we were maybe, it's not that we were talking badly about you, no, it's that we were raising problems. Maybe that's why uh, your ears were hot. Uh, yeah, it's a question of six o'clock instead of seven o'clock. So, good evening, Monsieur Alain. Good evening, Mr. May. My first comment to the uh, dear population, Mercredi Show has started. Uh, we've invested a lot in Place 1604. So I invite you to uh, come to Mercredi Show. Uh, certainly a beautiful event for the whole family and uh, gives you an opportunity to see our downtown. Another thing too, Mr. Mayor, I want to thank you for having nominated me, on, appointed me on the uh, Kodiak RCMP uh, committee. It was my first meeting last week and it's really a beautiful thing. Uh, I must uh, say that I'm going to be the first one to support the uh, RCMP. It's a very professional uh, meeting, very informative, and I congratulate them with, for their transparency. And also there are challenges uh, coming up. Uh, I've already mentioned it here, and I'm going to mention it again with the legalization of marijuana. Uh, costs on our police forces are going to be increased. I hope that as a council, we'll be working with the provincial authorities and the federal authorities uh, to obtain funds, not only to manage, but to, to give the proper tools to our RCMP members. We uh, uh, talk about the uh, measurement tools with, uh, for, uh, they, they don't exist yet. Uh, so legalization is uh, coming and there are no tools to uh, measure the amounts uh, of people driving under the influence of marijuana. So these are things that we're going to have to do. This is a new era uh, for cannabis. So for or against, uh, either way, at the end of the day, we need the proper tools. Uh, that's a comment that I wanted to, to, to make, but I'll uh, leave my colleague Ted to talk about the question of uh, Madame School. Thank you, Monsieur Alain. Madame Arsenault. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have a question to ask to the uh, municipal uh, director. Do we have uh, looping for uh, people who have problems of hearing here at City Hall? If not, would it be possible to have it? Because we have more and more people who uh, have difficulties of hearing. Uh, uh, hearing. So it's something that wouldn't be too expensive, but that would be really good and pleasant for our citizens of this city. I was asked for it during my holidays two weeks ago, which is why I wasn't here at the last meeting. It's something these people who are affected by uh, their ears, they can't uh, take part in conversations. A lot of they miss a lot of communication. So it uh, would be a good thing to have here at City Hall. I understand that if you have a lot of money, that you can even purchase some that are going to be uh, for different levels of hearing uh, when people want don't want to pay for those that are really expensive for. Uh, low-income people, but it's something that would be appreciated by our citizens. So please, could you check it out? And another thing I wanted to say is uh, happy holidays for those who are taking holidays during the summer and have a good summer. Thank you, Madame Marcelot. So the looping idea has been duly noted. Monsieur Thibodeau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have nothing tonight. Thank you. Madame Le Boutillier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I have two uh, items. First of all, I would like maybe to uh, check out in the city of Deb. The 28th of July, as you know, is the day 
of commemoration of the deportation of Acadians. And uh, I think maybe there's something that we could do, maybe just by respect, maybe in the morning, uh, raising of the flag, something like that. Maybe we could uh, start to, to uh, follow the trends in Acadie. There are a lot of municipalities that are doing things. So I wanted to bring that up. And another thing is because of the heat wave that we have now, and maybe it exists already, but maybe to look into, for example, uh, specifically people uh, in need, maybe a place uh, during these heat waves uh, where they can come and uh, uh, refresh themselves, cool off uh, uh, somewhere that they can. That's what I had to brought. Uh, that's what I wanted to bring up tonight. Um, yes, uh, Julie noted we saw what happened in Montreal. We don't want to compare ourselves to them, but it's a challenge uh, with the heat wave that uh, we're going that are going to be more frequent and longer, last longer for sure. Monsieur Brideau. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Well, Mr. Assistant Super, Superintendent, uh, Monsieur Le Breton, earlier when you were not here, we mentioned something about speed, something that was brought up already a couple of times at the uh, council. Uh, in the last couple of days on the Rue Thibaudot and the Rue Gould, I have uh, four residents who have complained already. Uh, speed was really intolerable on Thibodeau Street because La Rue Gaspé right now there's construction uh, so traffic is redirected uh, to uh, Thibodeau so I'm bringing this up because I don't want to wait for an accident a fatal accident and uh, I mean the same comment goes for all streets uh, be it uh, Gaspé, Thibodeau, Gould uh, it's, it's, uh, but there doesn't seem to be that much visibility of the RCMP patrol cars, maybe that would help. Uh, so uh, I'm putting in a request, please, we don't want to west, uh, we don't want to wait for fatalities. Okay, Monsieur Thibodeau, yes, I'll be uh, addressing that tomorrow morning. In cases like that, uh, don't wait, call the uh, uh, headquarters and we generally will be able to send the patrol cars I know you're bringing it tonight but don't wait to, we say it often if you have complaints people should call it goes more quickly it's more efficient if there's a problem we'll find a solution quickly I uh, I made the comments to the people if you have the opportunity to take down the license plate numbers uh, yeah, well, I'll make sure to call the RCMP immediately. A resident was saying, listen, this morning I was uh, sitting there in my uh, living room drinking my coffee, and all I saw was a black car. I just saw the car. I mean, he was going so fast uh, in front of my window. So I'm saying there's something going on there. Uh, we have to look into it. But if we do, that will be taken care of. Tomorrow we'll send the patrol cars first thing. Even tonight before I go, I'm going to send an email to the uh, day shift uh, and uh, for tomorrow morning so that the members uh, get there, the staff immediately do something. And at the same time, I want to mention that uh, we've increased the uh, roadblocks um, and I hope that uh, it's going to be the same way during the summer. So you're going to see us often. Also, we increased uh, our uh, bicycle patrols on the uh, bicycle paths. I think it had been mentioned at one point. Uh, so I just wanted to share that with you. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Maybe for the thousands of uh, listeners, maybe we could give the phone number that people can call. Because we would want uh, people to, yeah, they call the direct line 875-2400. There's always an operator that answers at any time. The number again, 875-2400. Oh, no, sorry, 
2400857-2400. Usually people will call there. It's a French and English message. You choose the language. And then there's an operator also in Dieppe. Uh, uh, it'll take a, a minute, minute and a half by the time you get through all the messages. But there's always someone there 24-7. Thank you, Monsieur Melanson. Monsieur Cormier. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Nothing tonight. Thank you, Mr. Cormier. Monsieur Leblanc. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. This is our July meeting. I want to talk about the imaginary festival, Festival Imaginaire, from the 26th to the 29th of July, 2018. The festival called Imaginaire. So look at the municipality website and see the uh, program, you'll find it there. So, come on down again this year. You'll find the information on the website. And that's all for tonight. Thank you, Monsieur Councillor Godet. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. The only item I'm going to be raising, I'll be repeating basically what uh, we discussed at the beginning of the meeting, Concerning uh, Anna Malenfant's school, behind the school, there seems to be regular groupings of uh, youth, and they stay there till 1 o'clock in the morning, 2 o'clock in the morning, and uh, they're noisy. And people who live next to there complain of the noise during the night. They've called the police already, and the police go to the site and ask the, the kids to leave, but there's no sequels, and the youth come back the following night, so we're looking for a permanent solution. We have to find one. Uh, they suspect that there's probably uh, drugs and all sorts of other things, but, you know, they're around 15, they go there, the big problem is that the, the site is accessible by car at 9, 10 o'clock. Sometimes there are 9 or 10 cars that are parked uh, behind the school, and the youth stay there all evenings. We've contacted the school district to try to see what their role could be. I mean, it's a school land, and... Uh, the thing is that they don't seem to be interested in trying to find a solution. And during the discussions that I had, Mr. Melanson said that he's going to uh, get together the RCMP, our staff, and the school district to see if there's a possibility of a permanent solution because the school is not being used during the summer. And there's a lot of noise and goings on. So that's the only point I wanted to raise tonight. Okay, I'll be waiting for your call and then we can meet maybe youth interveners and the uh, youth house uh, because those are the ages. Uh, I mean, so we're going to be uh, contacting the, those people and try to get a, uh, an action plan. I'm going to see, try to find out how many calls we received from citizens to see how many times we went to patrol the area, how many times we went there. It'll give us an idea as to uh, if we went there often. We can give you the name of the person who calls us regularly. I'd like her to call us. These people should call us. Uh, the phone number? 857. Yeah, sometimes it's difficult because all they receive is a, a recorded message. No, the police go there. It's not that they don't go there, but that's they go and they tell the kids, okay, it's time to go home now. That's all. All right, thank you. So we weren't too bad with you. 
No, once again, I'm sorry for having been late, but uh, like I said to your colleagues, I was at the office and I was waiting for seven o'clock, uh, but I could have come at uh, six because I was waiting. We know that uh, sometimes uh, the change is not properly communicated to the proper people. And, but during the month of July and August, it's always at 6 p.m. and only once in a month. So in two weeks, don't come here at 6 because we won't be here. No, I'll make sure that uh, I'll, find, I'll find out before. Thank you. I'd also like also to make a comment concerning the concerns raised by Conseiller Alain concerning cannabis. Obviously, we agree with what was raised. I just want to maybe talk about what is being done with the different municipal associations, be it the AFMMB, the Francophone uh, Municipalities of New Brunswick, or the associations of the cities of municipalities, or the Union of Municipalities of New Brunswick. All these associations are working very hard, and they've been doing so for a couple of months, to make sure that the municipalities uh, have their share of the income. I was going to say share of the cake, but you no, know, or donuts, or whatever is going to be done with the cannabis, but that we have our share of things because we know it. But at the end of the line, it's going to impact uh, the operations of these police services. And right now, the province is telling us basically that uh, we will not have any additional costs. But it's uh, difficult to think that there won't be any additional costs for the police until we get the invoice. Uh, and then they'll say, well, it's because of the cannabis, and then we'll be a year late and we won't be reimbursed. And we'll still be negotiating the year to come. So I hope that this is, uh, there's going to be a solution. The associations are still putting pressure on the provincial government because the federal has already decided they've given 25% more income. At the beginning, it was supposed to be 50-50. And they said, no, they said we'll give 25% more in order for the province can transfer it to the municipalities. No, it was supposed to be 75-25 and it was changed to 50-50 so that the province can give money to the municipalities. It was specifically mentioned by the Premier, Prime Minister Trudeau at the time when the declaration was made to support the municipalities which, who will have, to, uh, will have additional costs. So obviously the uh, New Brunswick Premier is not listening to us, but uh, we still want to get that message across to him uh, from the municipalities because there is no doubt if, if there really is zero impact, uh, it's, the, it's for the province. There's no impact. The only thing that's going to change for them is they're going to be re getting some money. Uh, things have been done. There is no, no, no cost to the province and uh, they're asking us to tell us to tell them what the costs are and we ask them the same thing what are your costs you so there's a debate there with the uh, municipal associations thank you for having raised that uh, tonight uh, uh, in order to give me the opportunity to give you the details so another thing i want to add and maybe i've gone beyond my four minutes no, no, I said there was an additional minute. Okay, five. The 14th of July is uh, here soon. It's the uh, uh, national holiday of uh, France, so we want to wish a good holiday to our uh, French friends for the national holiday, and particularly our general consul, Madame Montmeran, and her team. Equally, tomorrow morning, France against uh, Belgium in France. Uh, Soccer, Allez les Bleus, and good evening to all.